profile blogs, they look like they might be writing something that I'm interested in. And they proceed on to there. Um, there's a theory in um, ecology called island biogeography, which talks about the way species radiate out from the mainland and go into islands. And uh, I think the Carnival of the Vanities and several other things function the same way. What you have is a gigantic mass of readers. And what you have to do is find some way to attract the readers that would be interested in what you do from that gigantic mass. Um, in, bio, in biogeography, it's called archa, I can never say this word, archipelagical, archipel, archipelago, archipelagical speciation. What happens is a species moves out from the mainland, goes down a peninsula, and skips there from island to island. Now, the problem is islands are very small. They are not able, really, to handle stable populations on their own. And what ends up being with them is that species, uh, individuals will come out and dive, and they're continuously replaced. The farther away an island is from the mainland, the less this happens, and the more likely it is right that way that the species will go extinct. Now, it's kind of an odd metaphor to think of, but lots of blogs also go extinct. And from what I've been able to tell, it's because of a lack of community. Um, blogs without incoming links, blogs without outgoing links, have a much higher chance of dying, simply because they don't have any um, input, any support from readers out there. I mean, if you're really, really stubborn, and you're writing just for yourself, and there are people that will do this, you will write for years and years and years without a reader. But for most people, they tend to like the attention and the feedback the readers get. What Carnal the Vanities does is allows someone to go out from the mainland of the internet, follow the links down to them, and decide whether or not this is kind of a internet ecological system that they like. I mean, the posts really provide content. Um, and they will either stay there or they go away. The nice thing about the Carnival of Vanities is it's good for new blogs. They come out here, they get a slug of readers. They do this for several weeks or several months, and eventually they go away. The people that participate now are not the same people that participated at the beginning. It's almost always newer blogs looking for readers. Eventually they grow out of it. They move to some of the more specialized blog surveys, um, like Grand Rounds is medical. Tangled Bank is specifically uh, ecological. Um, there's literally dozens. Um, Bora of science and politics tends to pay actually a lot more of attention to how many carnivals there are than I do. And it's, it's getting to the point where it's, try, it's like trying to drink the sea, simply because there's so many of them. Um, I've talked too much. Uh, but you raised two in interesting uh, uh, issues, the life cycle and the lifespan of a, of a weblog community. So let's, let's keep those in mind and try to uh, cycle back and, and hear from those. Let's ask uh, Ed Cohn. <coughs> Ed, uh, Ed Cohn is a, is a journalist in... Okay. You end up with kind of a microphone bandolier. Okay. I did. Yes. Yeah. Ed Cohn is a uh, journalist and blogger from Greensboro, North Carolina, um, and uh, is a, uh, uh, mm -hmm. frequently linked Here. from Instapod. So what I'm interested in, in uh, asking Ed to really talk about is Don't how he's both. used uh, his blog and uh, how he's, he's built um, uh, incoming traffic using uh, this idea of what Sid talked about, links in and links out. That was, that was great. great. Um, I don't know that I'm the perfect person to answer the question, how do you build massive traffic and community at your blog, since I don't have massive traffic and community at my blog. But the fact of the matter is that's not what I'm trying to do. There's a one-word answer. If you want flow, if you want a huge number of people to come to your website, does everybody know the one-word answer for that? Porn. Yes, I heard it. Thank you. Okay. Not, that's not what I'm doing. Um, another way to do it, if, if I'm more into politics and local stuff, um, another way to get high flow and high visibility is just to be super hard edge, super partisan, um, and although, I don't know, maybe John Hood thinks I am, um, I think I'm not, I try not to be, um, I try to be sort of in that mushy middle and, you know, I think I'm right, but I listen to what you say. So, if, if you want to have super high flow and build a community of true believers, 
um, be Atrios or uh, be Glenn Reynolds. I mean, and that's great. That's just not what I'm trying to do at edcone.com. I'm very interested in traffic. I want my community to be big, but I'm trying to build the biggest community for my voice that I can build. So number one is define what you're trying to do. Um, and if you figure out a way to sell ads based on traffic flow, porn could be for you. Um, but for me, at edcone.com, I'm trying to get people, local people and national readers, to come and think and find out what we're doing in Greensboro, follow this experiment at the News and Record a little bit. Um, so how do I do it? Well, I guess there are people who feel that there's a purity where you write your blog and you must not do anything other than write your blog and link. I'm not one of those people. I email my links out. As a matter of fact, the first blogger con that uh, Dave Weiner organized, I asked Glenn Reynolds, um, how do you get so much flow? And his answer was, I publicized myself. I emailed stuff. Um, so if I have a story that I think will appeal to Glenn Reynolds, um, I email him. I say, here, here, Glenn, here's something. If I have something I think will appeal to Atrios, probably something different. Um, I, I email that um, to Duncan Black. And on a good day, they both link to me and my uh, traffic spikes. And some of that will stick. Some of those people will come back. Some of those people will say, well, this guy actually says something interesting. I'm going to put him on my aggregator. And they will begin to follow me on their own. Um, another key is I don't just email my stuff. Uh, Jay Avatar, Greensboro blogger, did a great post the other day uh, on the Bush budget in red and blue. So things that he thought reflected better uh, results for the Republicans, he put in red. For the Democrats, he put in blue. Things that served everybody, he put in purple. It was a nice little trick. Um, and so I emailed that out to some big name bloggers because that builds my brand. It's altruistic, I guess, but um, it lets them know, I'm trying to help their blog. I'm trying to build their community um, by sharing something that I see in my network that maybe they won't see unless I send it to them. So it's not all about getting me flow. It's about helping people. Um, links are the currency. Links are the currency. You link to people. They check Technorati. They check their re referral log. They say, well, who is this? Why am I getting hits from edcone.com? And then maybe they come back and they read. Maybe they give you a reciprocal link. You, you got to kind of cast your bread upon the waters. You can't look at everything as like, well, I linked that SOV and he never came back to me. You have to say, I linked that person because they're good, but there is a payoff to your link. There is a payoff to your altruism. Um, other very simple things, and uh, the Trixie blog mentioned this a bit, um, you know, post regularly. Give people something to read. Um, Jim Rome, the sports reporter did on the radio, he sums it up for his call, callers thusly, have a take and don't suck. I mean, that's basically what you need to do at your blog. Um, write frequently, know something, find stuff out that other people aren't blogging. Um, uh, the, the CNN guy, uh, who did resign, by the way, I don't know if you all saw that, Easton Jordan resigned. Um, the long tail pretty much wrapped around him and strangled him. Um, I didn't write much about Easton Jordan. You know why? Because I don't know much about it. And people who are a lot closer to it and a lot more interested in it were covering it. I didn't write a lot about it. Maybe I could have generated some traffic. Maybe I could have taken some super hard line position one way or the other and gotten a lot of traffic and, and linked from Atrios or from Glenn Reynolds by saying Ed Cohn says Easton Jordan is you know, innocent slash guilty. Um, I didn't care. That wasn't my thing. I'm interested in the story, but I wasn't going to put that at my blog. What, what do I put at my blog? I linked to something funny that Anonymosis, Anonymosis, God, that's hard to say in the morning. Um, he's he's trying to drag the Charlotte Observer kicking, well, I, said, I didn't say kicking and screaming, I think I said whining and crying, um, into the age of blogging. That's interesting to me. And ultimately, will that get uh, Dave a lot of hits? Probably not. Will that get me a lot of hits? Probably not but it's going to get the hits that I value. That's the community I'm trying to build. So uh, that's really what I wanted to say. Um, how do we do this now? That's great. So I'm going to call on Anton. You, yeah. Yeah. Um, give this back to you. Yeah.
late today. Long bail flight. Is Chris Wells? I mean Chris Anderson. Pardon me. October 2004 <coughs> wired. October, good. And also his blog is the book in which you may participate in. Therefore, keeping uh, wired. Otherwise, I can play. Okay, so we've heard from uh, three bloggers, uh, raised a couple issues uh, uh, from the theoretical long tail uh, down to the practical. Uh, uh, have a lot of links. Uh, let's open it up. What are your uh, reactions? What are your questions? What are your thoughts? And uh, when you do uh, speak, would you please first say your name? If you have a web blog, tell us what the name of the web blog is or the URL. If you don't have a web blog, mention um, the organization that you may be affiliated with, please. Uh, so I'm Will R. I, I have a question since Instapundit has come up a couple times. I never read Instapundit. I was just wondering when does that become antimatter to your, your blog? Or do you even care like that? What do you mean? Um, you mean like, like, like uh, I'm going to start avoiding your blog because right. you, uh, you appear on Instant Pundit. Well, much. I guess, I guess then, um, although I want you to come to my blog, and I want, you to, I want you to read my blog carefully enough that you'll say, oh, Ed Cohn violently disagrees with Instant Pundit, uh, lawyer like me to justify a bad war in Iraq, but he honors him for being right about uh, gay rights and other important social issues, and about the web in general, I want you to read my blog that way. And if you're somebody who says he linked to Instapundit or linked from Instapundit or Atrios or Dave Weiner or any other big name person who attracts enemies and friends on the web, and you just can't read me because of that, sorry. So I don't get the credibility of Instapundit. That's well, it's not the credit, it's the flow. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there is, the, the, the point about it is if you're trying to build a community, a community has people in it, right? And if you want to get um, you know, thousands of hits a day, um, you may find some of the people who give me thousands of hits on a given day to be more or less credible. And there are people who, as I say, they will only read stuff that's hard edged in their direction. And so there are people who might say, I'm not going to go to edcom.com because he has a link from Atrios. Well, let's put that that's Eric their in. I wanted to add something to that. Oh, um, so I'm Eric Muller, and I'm, uh, my blog is Is That Legal? Um, I just lost some power here. Um, <laughs> the last couple of weeks, I've been focusing primarily on my blog on this uh, professor from Suffolk County Community College named Tom Woods, who's got a bestseller out called The Politically Incorrect Guide to American History. Uh, and I've got a bunch of stuff up that all of it quotes directly out of his mouth um, of some very startling stuff that, that he has said over the course of the last eight or ten years and some uh, an organization that he helped to found. Um, on the same day, about five or six days ago, I was linked simult virtually simultaneously by Atrios and Instapundit. It was obviously a big traffic day, but it was it was it was one of the best things that happened has happened in the over two years that I've been blogging because they were it was essentially the polar opposites in the blogosphere were blogging my story in agreement with each other and I would wager that that happens almost never that, <laughs> that, that Duncan Black and Glenn Reynolds agree and frankly I thought it was a huge score when I got Glenn to link to that story because it pulled Glenn Reynolds speaks to the people that Tom Woods speaks to, or at least there's a significant overlap, I think, between their, their audiences. And for, so while I might not agree with Glenn a whole lot, and I don't, that was, that was not just, it was not just sort of huge in terms of my traffic, but that brought a combination of readers together who are rarely together in the same place, uh, being steered to a place in a friendly way. And I, I thought that, so, you know, what, Whatever you want to say about Glenn, I, I just thought that was, in terms of community, that was a big moment. Dave? Well, Tell us um, who you are. Please. Dave Weiner, Scripting News. Um, I don't know if I really want to say this, but it seems to me that the obsession with links and traffic is like a dot com business model, but spread out over the long tail. I mean, in the dot com age, you're going to want to get eyeballs and then somehow monetize them. Well, they never monetized them, they all went away. Why? Why do you care about how many people read your blog? I mean, um, I know a blogger, Phil Greenspan, who's from MIT, 
who says that, and this struck me as maybe a much better theme for why we should blog, which is that he tries to record information that only he has and put it on his blog. Google will then pick it up, and anybody coming along looking for it later will be able to find it. And so he feels like he's doing his part, being the cog in the information factory of the planet, you know, and, uh, and then he can go on with his life. Uh, there are, um, the, obviously the most popular way is trying to attract kids from big waters and <coughs> evolve a few readers. Um, the why, other way, why is that a big deal for you? It, it's not a big deal for me okay. because I don't actually get, I actually do, what I actually try and do is something that I think in theory is much harder, is I try to attract brand new people from Google. If I, um, I mean, I, my effective audience is about 50 people. That's why do you try to attract <laughs> and this is popular for you. Well, I mean, I, in the, the scheme of things, I am unpopular. For me, I decided long ago. Clap your was, hands if you like them. <laughs> in, in the back. When I first started writing, when I first started writing at South Carolina in my creative writing classes, um, I found that I wrote only if I had an audience. Now, that's shallow stuff. I'll admit, I do not have the will to write just for myself, at least when I started. Now, when I started my blog, I thought 10 people was great. I would spend hours sitting here typing for those 10 people, of which five were probably me looking at the recording. <laughs> but the longer I type, the more I actually liked the actual part of writing. I mean, for me, everybody over a certain number is gravy anyway. <clears throat> um, but a lot of people like the idea of trying to build your readership. I mean, I when you're really big, that. it's, you know, well, yeah, what are you people doing looking at building your readership? We have that you know, off the board, too. I'm not, I agree. <laughs> 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 uh, my name is also Will. Uh, I will. <laughs> um, and uh, the thing that I'm hearing out of this discussion that I think is kind of interesting is, um, question of whether there's an ethics to traffic building uh, and an ethics to uh, blog community building. Um, Ed Cohn uh, was talking about, I guess, what I heard was kind of three distinct ways of driving traffic to a blog site. Uh, the first kind of being uh, the way of writing what people want to hear. If you write something that people want to hear, um, traffic from those people, uh, and people are going to come back and they're going to say, um, this, is, this is interesting, this is what I want to read. So that's you know, kind of a natural way. If you have content on the site that people want to read, they're going to come back and read your site. Another way uh, would be to link to people and to take links from people and say, well, so-and-so linked to this and so-and-so linked to that, and um, kind of engage the ego and say, well, I, you know, I have a crush on you, you have a crush on me. And, uh, and that's, you know, that is going to get kind of a reciprocal action. Uh, and the third way is um, to actually push the content out to people then and say, well, I'm interested in this, and I think this is interesting, and other people might find this interesting, so I'm going to actually push the content directly to them in an email or something similar to that. So um, I wonder if what people think about uh, kind of, you know, what is, uh, what is the, the, the right way to do it? You know, is there, is I just want to clarify, my thing, and, and there isn't a right or a wrong way, We're, there are millions of us out here doing it. My thing isn't writing what people, what I think people want to hear. My thing is writing what I want to say and then finding ways <coughs> to get as many people who might be interested in that to come see it. So there's a little, it's not, I mean, if I wanted to just write what people want to hear, I would write every day to Glenn Reynolds and say, Hey, that Iraq war is going great. Or <laughs> <laughs> I would write to Atrios and say, Hey, Glenn Reynolds is a scumbag. But I'm not, doing, I'm not doing either one of those. I'm writing what I want to say for Greensboro and for my honest, and then trying to get people to do it. So it's, I, I, I know you didn't mean that. I'm yeah, it just it, you raise it as a possibility of something that people. Could well, do. the born angle. Yeah. I mean, if you want, if you want a huge audience, there are ways to get it. Uh, in the back and then over here. It, it just strikes me. 
question Dave asks is a very good question because it raises essentially is there different types of blocks? You got essentially what you said before, it's, it's what you want to do with your block. If you're doing a political blog, <coughs> damn right you want eyeballs. If you don't have eyeballs, then you're probably not doing a very good thing that you want to do. Uh, you've got to establish what it is you're trying to accomplish and if, if, if that means getting eyeballs, links and clicks, then that's what you're looking for. If it's just Thank <laughs> you. 